So I will answer just a quick one on this one because and then we'll round up with some of the good to a black or who has to run um, to another equally important issue. Because we are confronted with a situation where and I, and, I th and I know that this is of concern to you as well, because when you hear such values of, of land being sold in prime areas, I'm sure that if you had heard it, maybe if it was going through the right process, you would also be interested. But it certainly comes as a concern if these things are not done openly, and then it raises questions about what could have been done right and what has to be done to correct some of these issues that are going on to the detriment of you and I. Let me say a good morning to your viewers. <clears throat> and um, Alfred, uh, we need to put this conversation in context. And the context is the breakdown of law and order. Because over the years, mm -hmm. governments simply haven't been accountable for the policy outcomes that they choose to embark on. What is happening now in the land grab situation is a degeneration because the no rules or framework was put in place and respected. So people have had access. If you go through uh, the records, uh, Accra wasn't always like this. Mm -hmm. the, the beginnings of Accra was uh, Jamestown and the forest in between Accra Newtown and forests in there. Yeah. So infilling has been with us since the 60s, if, if uh, the research is right, but more or less, it was, it was really codified in the Rollins years, in the 1990s, when there was an, this aggressive infilling policies were developed. So the, 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 the infilling process is actually by law. It is, and it is supposed to be managed by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. But here we have a situation where the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources is confronted by two challenges they have woefully failed at. Land grabs in Accra and Galamse. Yeah. Land mm -hmm. and natural resources. Mm -hmm. I think the least we deserve is some accountability. Yeah. I think the least yeah. we deserve yeah. is a minister who says, I can't cope, so I've resigned. Yeah. Oh. Yes, oh. accountability yeah. must, you know, it is the it's lack the of the action. Least. It is the lack of accountability that is supporting the impunity so that something that is supposed to be by law so the people come forward and go through a process and are granted something transparently. Now it becomes a midnight situation because you go in there and you take it and nobody will ask you a question. And the person who is sending you in there is the person who is supposed to actually uh, protect the place. The person who has power to take care of the place is the person who is uh, using people in the dark mm -hmm. to take what doesn't belong to them what belongs to everybody else. So it's a matter of accountability. How do you ensure accountability? How do you enforce? Mm. And, and it depends on the leadership. If the president has failed, if he's minister for lands and uh, natural resources has failed in the two key areas his ministry is supposed to be uh, working at, I think the least the people of Ghana deserve as a first step is for the minister himself to account for that by losing his office. And then the other accountability processes, I believe, can follow. This is sheer gratuitous abuse. And, and people are helpless. Well, the people who you're supposed to complain to are the ones who are being, <laughs> who, are, who are attacking you. Yeah. The people you're supposed to complain to are attacking you. So, so how, how do you deal with such a situation if the people don't resort to their rights to insist on accountability? Somebody must be held accountable. And you see, recently I'm beginning to worry that Mr. President, who has a long, remarkable history in law enforcement, human rights, he is, he is, he is one of the, if not the most quoted lawyer with constitutional law cases. Uh, the last time we counted, we got 68 cases that he's been directly involved in that have shaped the legal history of this country. And now he's helpless. He's helpless. One of the most important intergenerational assets we have are under attack. <laughs> because land within Accra that is owned by the state is intergenerational. It has purposes beyond those of us who are here now. If you are divesting that land, the results to the state must benefit generations to come. Okay. 
So you must either sell it at a good price and do something else with the money or keep it for other generations. If you go to Galamse, it's an intergenerational situation. We'll deal with that. It's one of the issues yes. ahead of so time. Yes. So I'm saying that why is the president looking helpless? Is it deliberate? Is he not on top of the facts? Or is he complicit? Because you have to look at the factors. It's either one of three things. Either he is deliberately keeping uh, 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 quiet. He is, doesn't know what is going on, which is worse. To be president and not see what is going on, not know what is going on. And, and they know because they've had the temerity to issue denial letters, flimsy denial letters, and, and, and giving excuses for people who are out there using their name to do uh, uh, funny things. Or else, he's directly complicit. He's benefiting from what's happening. That's, that's the only inference we can draw. And if he's benefiting from what is happening, then he's breaking his oath to Ghanaians because he swore an oath to protect all of us to protect the public purse. The public purse includes all the national assets uh, that we have. What is going on now is obscene. This country is broke. We are at IMF. And yet everywhere you pass in greater Accra, uh, choice areas, huge, huge buildings are going up. What inference can you make there? <laughs> that beyond the, the, the grab, individuals faceless individuals have a well resource enough to put up skyscrapers when the government can pay its bills so so where are the tax monies where are those people making those monies that the government doesn't get enough of that flow to pay its bills mm -hmm. who are those who are behind this thing so why can't we find them it's because they are the same people who have to find themselves they are protecting themselves from us because of the impunity Mr. Mm Ogansi, -hmm. <laughs> where the situation is, and that is why I, I support the labor unions on the other side, the same thing must come through on this, and, uh, uh, the, the bipartisan approach uh, where MPP uh, parliamentarians are involved uh, is fantastic because we need to relook really at how we manage our state in terms of its assets and liabilities. If we can't tell our, the state of our assets, then all we can do is continue to borrow. Mm -hmm. A lot of the borrowing we are doing, we could have been leveraging state assets. If we right. knew how much land we had in Accra that belongs to the state, and we had it priced at fair market value, we wouldn't need to go to the IMF. We could securitize our lands. We, didn't, we wouldn't need to go to the IMF. If, mm -hmm. if a, a half acre, or if an acre is being sold to private developers for a hundred, two hundred less than two hundred thousand CDs, uh, convert that into dollars, current rate and let's see, two hundred thousand CDs. Who, who is a smart mathematician here? My math well, was, uh, was we're doing it by the current rate of sixteen CDs. Yes, yeah. um, that is. Less than twelve thousand dollars. Less than twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. Mm. And that whole acre. Which is being sold for twelve thousand dollars is worth four and a half million dollars on the open market. Well, you divide an acre into four, and each piece is worth over a million. So, so isn't this robbery? This is state-sponsored robbery. You blame a land guard who is just collecting a few thousand yeah. to go and be violent because they are unemployed or they are otherwise or they don't or, fear. Well, just, that eh? cannot also be justified. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I'm not justifying land guardism. I'm okay. saying that we are all being used. Right. <laughs> all of us. Because the institutions that are supposed to do the right thing are being manipulated and used against the rest of us, and we don't seem to have a cure. And that is the danger. Okay. Because when you don't have a cure officially, the cure tends to become ex-official. And that is when you have people exploding into the streets and otherwise. And that is why you have all the labor unions up in arms. They should add state capture to the grievances. Okay. Yeah. They, 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 they are up in arms about Galamse. They should add state capture yeah. to the, uh, 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 these land capture things to the grievances. Why should you sell an acre of land in cantonments for $12,000? That's 183,750 cities. $12,000. Okay. Uh, Ghanaians right. appreciate it when you talk in dollars because wow. they, they know the difference. Okay. Because they melt dollars. Uh, right. $12,000. Okay. And, and it is worth on the open market $4.5 million. So who gets the balance of uh, $4 uh, <laughs> million, uh, 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 400 and something 
a thousand dollars that that accrues when that thing is commercialized please mm. this is not fair one can't do this to Ghanaians. it mm. is not fair and officialdom must take responsibility the president must act in the case of the land grab in the case of galamsey the president is responsible heads must roll as a start right if heads are not rolling and then it means that there's complicity. We can infer that there's complicity. That's why heads are not rolling. Okay, and this is what point where Professor Ransford Jampo is joining us in a bit. Mm -hmm. Professor Paul Lucas, the University of Ghana, Legon, says, mm -hmm. <laughs> situation like this, if it, he says if lecturers knew that uh, land like this was being sold at this <laughs> price, I mean, oh, yeah. you I can mean, save they, they will have put in a bit. Well, why not? Anyway, look, yeah, look, this, one, this we'll, I, 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 I totally agree with my senior brother. That heads must rule. And this state capture discussion, Galamse, is part of it.